Hey yo, how's it going guys? Six Foot Hacks here, bringing y'all today the second part of my Bra For All pool match series here. And if you may have missed the first part of this, then I recommend you guys go check that out. I went over my team real quickly and what exactly Bra For All is and why I'm doing this in two parts in my first actual battle of my pool matches. So yeah, a bunch happened in part number one. You guys should definitely go check out and then come back to this because I may not be going over it as detailed as I did in uh, the first part. Also, because the first battle was there, I am going to say the outcome of that first battle. So if you don't want to get spoiled, then this is me literally warning you, hey, I'm about to spoil the outcome. So yeah, there's going to be a little timestamp as well for you guys to just go ahead and skip right to the first battle if you, wanna, if you don't want to hear uh, me rambling about the team matchup for a few minutes. So we did lose our first round game of the pool matches unfortunately so we have to try and bounce back and if we win both of the games in this video then we basically move on to pools but if we lose one depending on differential we can still get in but the odds are not that likely for us to get in so yeah hopefully we can do well in our next two games here so looking at the matchup my opponent has z tapakoko and z gogo because it was point system so yeah he he got high tiered Coco as a Z, so he had to get uh, something lower as his Z. But we are facing H. Colin, a person I've never played before. I never even heard of him up until now. But I don't want to take my chances and assume that he is not competent and he doesn't know what he's doing. So I'm going into this battle expecting him to just absolutely destroy me. So that's how I kind of went uh, into prep here. Again, I didn't spend that much time on this prep. I didn't really spend much time on any of my preps for the games, but... Regardless though, uh, scariest thing on my opponent's team, easily Tapu Koko and then also the Weavile. Both of those offensively just kind of destroy me. Defensively, Bronzong and Toxapex are very, very annoying. I do not expect Gogo and I do not expect Minior at all to come to this game because Gogoat is a freaking Gogo. And I don't I don't really know what Gogoat would do in this battle, so I don't I don't expect it to come at all. And then Minior does literally nothing because I have Celesteela and even Deontay, which both of those just take any hit that thing wants to go for. So as you can see here, we have nice and fat Leech Seed Celesteela. Main reason, because again, I don't expect Go-Goat, so Leech Seed should be very, very free against his entire team. The reason why I actually have Wakamberry is just in case I feel like leaving in Celesteela on Coco in order to take... An a uh, Thunderbolt so I can then Earthquake it, or if I have no use for my Celesteela, then I can catch him off guard, live a hit, and then blow him back with Earthquake, and then besides Earthquake with Air Slash, that hits everything else. Uh, it doesn't necessarily do any damage to the Bronzong here, but I can Leech Seed Bronzong and wear it down accordingly, so I'm really not concerned about not being able to do any type of super effective damage to Bronzong in the first place. Next up, we have Timid Mega Manetric here, running enough speed to outspeed the Weavile, if I'm not mistaken. I really didn't think I needed to run uh, max speed on this or enough speed to outspeed Coco. He's not going to needlessly waste EVs, so he is not going to be running uh, anywhere near this much speed on Coco, and then that kind of goes for the same as Weavile, but in case he does want to do that with Weavile, I want to be careful and at least have something to guarantee outspeed the Weavile. So I figured, hey, why not just kind of benchmark for Weavile. And then we can add in a little bit of Bolt. So Thunderbolt, Bolt Switch, Hidden Power, Ice, and Overheat. Uh, these are basically the staples of Mega Manetric. They hit absolutely everything on my opponent's team. And in Electric Terrain, I can definitely take advantage of that with Bolt Switch and Thunderbolt, which is really nice. Next off, we have my Tapu Koko Answer. Nice, super... Fat, Spadef, Bulky, Nidoking with the Protect, Earth Power, and Fire Blast. Earth Power and Fire Blast basically hit everything that my opponent could bring, which is great. I mean, I guess we don't hit the Minior, but again, I don't expect Minior whatsoever to come to this game. And if it wasn't for the Bronzong, I would have definitely ran Sludge Wave, but Fire Blast still does a really good chunk of damage to that depending on what his spread is going to be. And then I made sure to not forget Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks were literally the first move I put on this Nido King. I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not forgetting that again. So yeah, we have Rocks this time around. And then the speed is just a little bit of speed creep in case he thinks that I won't be running speed on Nido King for some reason. And then the 16 special attack EVs just kind of help Earth Power and Fire Blast do slightly more damage. 
to things. Next off, we have probably the coolest set that you guys are going to see on this entire squad, and that is Scarfed Blastoise. Now, I had another version of this team that had physically defensive Rocky Helmet Blastoise, but I figured that if I could somehow fit Deontay on my team, I actually don't need to have defensive Blastoise. And besides Toxapex, if you look at his team, there's not really much that switches into Blastoise. Well, I guess Gogo, -Go, but again, I really don't expect Gogo -Go at all to come to this match. So once Tapu, uh, not Tapu Coco, sorry, once Toxapex is gone, I can bring in my Scarf Blastoise. I have enough speed to outspeed Tapu Coco, and I get to just click Water Spout for free and potentially nab a KO, which is really awesome. And even if I take damage, I still have Surf, and if I get low enough, I have Turret, Scarf, Surf. Which is going to be doing pretty solid damage to everything except Toxapex and I guess Gogo -Go if he were to bring it. Like, I, I really, I really don't think he brings Gogo. -Go. Actually, now that I look at it, I don't know why I have Aura Sphere on this set. I think it was only to try and revenge kill the Weavile, but Water Spout and Surf should still be doing enough damage. And then Ice Beam is obviously for the Garchomp and I guess Gogo -Go if he were to bring it. Next off, I have Sub Endeavor. Groundium Z Deonce. Main reason I wanted to go with Groundium Z is because this does the most damage to Tapu Koko, Toxapex, and the Blaziken if it really comes down to it. Besides that, Earth Power hits, uh, not Earth Power, sorry, uh, Moon Blast hits everything else. Now, obviously, this is hard walled by Bronzong because I'm going to be doing no damage to it. But even if I had Hidden Power Fire, that's only doing like 15% if he's. Uh, super spadef bulky so i figured by running sub endeavor i can just keep subbing up on bronzong eventually go for the endeavor and just weaken it and maybe trade it 1v1 or i can sub up and endeavor toxapex to ensure that that thing is super low as well so this deonce can play a couple roles in this game it can definitely weaken his annoying core of toxapex and bronzong both of them potentially or one if it comes down to it which i will gladly take one being weakened if that's my only option, but if I can get both weakened with this set, that'll be amazing. Next off, we have a very cool Hydreigon set. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I don't really know what this EV spread is for. <laughs> Besides the speed, which is for uh, Garchomp, I don't know why I just have 108 special attack EVs and then like a bunch of HP EVs. I didn't run any calcs. I just figured, hey, maybe he won't break my sub with stuff. And then I'm still doing decent damage with only 108 uh, special attack EVs. But Earth Power and Dark Pulse hit everything. Sub Taunt is really nice because this helps me deal with Toxapex and potentially beat it 1v1 as well as even uh, beating Gogo 1v1 if you were to bring it. But if I am behind a substitute, then he's forced to bring in one of his offensive mons to try and break my sub. And he can't safely just U-turn with Tapu Koko either because I can just substitute once again and then potentially nab a KO regardless. So behind a sub, Hydreigon is actually really problematic for him to deal with so yeah guys that is our squad let's go ahead and get this second match started all right all right all right so here we have it our second match for our pool games in this phase of the brawl for all series so if you may have missed the first part of this two-part series going up today then you might be a little bit lost on what exactly is going on so i recommend you guys check out the first part of this uh there was also a battle in there that was our first pool battle and then this will be our second battle and then we're gonna have our third battle after this battle in this video here so yeah check that out so you guys can kind of know what's going on but right now we are currently in the pool phase which means we need to go positive if we want to get out of our pool because if we win one game out of our three but we lose the other two there is a chance we can still make it out of our pool but it's very very slim to none so if we can win these next two games then we should be guaranteed out of the pool phase going on into the next phase of the brawl for all so yeah if you do enjoy this hit that thumbs up button down below and let me know if you guys would like me to maybe do some more type of side draft league stuff like this so Looking at the matchup, I was very surprised to see that my opponent had brought uh, Go Goat because I did not expect it whatsoever. But I guess it does kind of make sense because we don't have a fire type and then we don't have a very offensive flying type because we have Celesteela, which is basically forced to run a defensive set this game. So it does kind of make sense that he may want to bring 
the go goat there but i was really happy to not see the mega garchomp that is one less offensive threat that we have to deal with however though along with gogo bronzong and toxapex are going to be very annoying defensively wise to break through and then his offensive core of coco blaziken and weavile could be very terrifying if uh, something like sd weavile is allowed to set up or even agility blaziken or if he's like calm mind tapu coco so i need to be careful with this offense and I need to try and break his fat mons going into this game. So we have Leech Seed, Celesteela, Standard Mega Manetrix, Spadef, Bulky, Nidoking, Scarf, Blastoise, Sub Endeavor, Deontay, and Sub Taunt Hydreigon. So clearly my Scarf Blastoise is probably not going to be doing anything in this battle because of my opponent having Go-Go now. Like Toxapex was one thing, but along with Go-Go, my set's basically useless unless I'm able to somehow break through both of those mons. So looking at leads, I figured my best lead was going to just be my Nidoking because I could go ahead and get on my rocks turn one potentially. As it leads with the Bronzong, we're both going to go for attacks against each other as he actually turns out to have the Zen Headbutt. Now, this is a really cool tech on his end, although I'm not sure why he didn't just have Psyshock. That might have been a little bit better because Zen Headbutt can miss or does Bronzong have a higher physical attack stat than special attack stat? I don't remember off the top of my head, but that Zen Headbutt did way too much damage to my Nidoking and the main reason I wanted to be aggressive and just fire blast Bronzong is because if I get rid of Bronzong then my um, Deontay here can actually put in a lot of work so he goes for the Zen Headbutt now I'm expecting him to just try and get up his rocks so I'm actually gonna go for my own rocks as he does get up his rocks I don't want to stay in here after I go for the protect and gain back a little bit of recovery as he does try to go for the Zen Headbutt once again I'm just gonna go ahead and switch into my Celesteela here as he actually ends up going for the Gyro Ball maybe thinking that I would bring in Hydreigon which does make sense but Celesteela is still basically free in this scenario like yes he has Go-Goat but at the same time I can still just kind of Leech Seed I don't really <laughs> lose anything in doing so even if he brought in the Go-Goat I can then just go for the Air Slash and that's still perfectly fine by me as I reveal to him that I have the Earthquake he decides to go for the recover probably just wanting to see what I would hit him with which is perfectly fine and I'm gonna decide just to continue being aggressive here with the Earthquake as he gets a crit burn with the Scald uh, that's actually a little bit annoying is it game changing no not really but uh, it was annoying at the time because now my Celesteela is not going to be doing any damage at all to this Toxapex when realistically 33% is pretty solid I think so he decides to bring in his Go-Go here as I try and substitute. And I'm going to put this on fast because these next couple turns are just me kind of staying in on this Go-Go. But he actually ends up going for the Roar. Sorry, that occurs uh, later in the match. But yeah, he roared me into Blastoise as I bring in Celesteela. I'm going to go for the Air Slash on Pex, expecting him to maybe bring in the Go-Go. But this is now my best chance to try and go for the lead seed to keep my Celesteela as healthy as I can. Because the more I wear down Bronzong or basically anything on his team, the better it is going to be for me in the long run here. As I hit the Air Slash, I'm going to be able to take any move this thing wants to go for and just continue chipping it down as he reveals to have the knockoff that is perfectly fine by me. I expect them to want to go for the Scald here, and I do risk the burn, which uh, might have been a little bit foolish on my end if he actually did burn me, but luckily he didn't. And now this is where uh, I kind of stay in here for about 15 turns. We're both just stubborn right now, and we stay in here. And my Dark Pulse is doing literally no damage to this Gogo -Go because it turns out that this Gogo -Go was max Spadef, max HP. And even though I only had about 100 special attack EVs on my Hydreigon, 24% is still kind of negligible damage, but I mean, hey, it's better than nothing, and if I can play my Hydreigon correctly, I will be able to eventually 1v1 this Go-Goat. Plus, there's always the fact that I can crit him with my Dark Pulse, or I can flinch him with my Dark Pulse, which ultimately is still going to be very good for me in this match. And then if my Hydreigon ends up behind a Substitute, that's actually really scary for him to deal with, because at this point, he still doesn't know what my last move is. So if he brings in the incorrect Mon while my Hydreigon is behind a Sub, then that could potentially just get me a free kill. Yo, so yeah, he's gonna stay in here and try to ensure that I don't end up behind a sub as I am aggressive. Go for the dark pulse instead of going for the substitute. I do get a flinch and I actually end up getting another flinch, which is really nice. And then I'm going to uh, read him like a book here and I'm gonna go for the taunt as he tries to go for the roar, I believe. And then I'm just gonna keep spamming dark pulse. I guess in hindsight, I could have gone for the substitute this turn as his taunt ends the following turn. 
I think is when he decides to switch out here after he breaks my substitute because again he can't allow me to be behind the sub that just puts him in a very very bad scenario so luckily he didn't go for the milk drink there as I can just be aggressive again or I can go for the taunt and he makes an excellent switch into the Tapu Koko here my gut my gut was telling me go for the sub go for the sub and I really wish I had gone for the substitute there but if I could keep that go go low that was one less answer for my scarf blastoise in the back which is something I was gladly willing to risk so he made a very smart play here bringing in his Tapu Koko and now I'm in a bit of a predicament I mean I do have my Nido King in the back but if he has U-turn he can definitely go for it but I need to risk it regardless because I don't have a good switch in to this Tapu Koko as he does go for the Dazzling Gleam I'm just going to go for the Fire Blast and absolutely obliterate this Go Goat and down it goes as in comes the Weavile and I knew that he was going to SD this turn like I wanted to be aggressive and go for the Fire Blast I really did but if I lose my Nido King then Tapu Koko just basically wins so realistically in the long run there was not enough benefits to me risking Nido King and risking him going for a non-ice type move. So in the end, the bad outweighed the good. So I was forced to go for protect here to see what he wanted to do. Plus by going for the protect, if he was choice, I could see what he wanted to lock himself into. But he does end up going for the Swords Ants as I'm basically forced to sack something off, which is going to be my Celesteela at this point in the game. It's not gonna be doing entirely too much else as I can bring in my Manetric. I'm gonna go straight for the overheat. I guess in hindsight, I should have honestly just gone for the Thunderbolt or the Bolt Switch, but I didn't want to risk him trying to be aggressive and staying in. At the same time though, maybe I should have checked the calc to see if Thunderbolt would have been enough to knock him out, but uh, it is what it is as I do a solid 30% to the Blaziken. I am worried that this could be scarfed, so I don't want to stay in and go for the Bolt Switch. And I bring in my Deontay as he makes a nice double switch into his Tapu Koko. And I can stay in here or I can switch out and ultimately I thought that he was going to try and go for the Bolt Switch or the Thunderbolt. In which case I could then go for the Substitute and I would be at a lot lower amount of HP to the point where I can still endeavor the Bronzong and get off a decent chunk of damage. Unfortunately in comes the Bronzong so I'm going to do something you don't typically do and I'm going to waste my Substitute here and Hard Switch right into my Manetric expecting him to go for the Gyro Ball or I guess the Zen Headbutt. As he does go for the Gyro Ball, I'm in a really good spot now. I have Electric Terrain. I get to just click Thunderbolt or Bolt Switch basically for free. And I don't think he's going to want to waste his Bronze on considering that it still has a good amount of use for him because he can't take on everything except for my Hydreigon. So I figured that he most likely is going to switch out here and potentially sack something off. And even if he brings in the Tapu Koko, I can Bolt Switch into my Nido King. If he brings in Blaziken, it's going to drop the Bolt Switch and so is the Weavile. And if he brings in Toxapex and I can get rid of that, then that's his second Water Resist gone, which opens up the gates for my Scarf Blastoise to come in and click Water Spout potentially for free. So he does decide to sack off his Toxapex here, which I guess is kind of justifiable. Like if you look at my team, this Toxapex realistically wasn't going to be doing anything. Manetric beats it. Hydreigon, he knows I'm sub taunt, so he can't beat me. I have sub Endeavor on my Deontay and I can continue subbing up on Toxapex and beat it eventually. And I have Earth Power on my Nido King. The only real thing he would need this Toxapex for is if I was an offensive Blastoise, which he does not know that I actually am offensive Blastoise. So even though he does live here, it doesn't really matter as I can bring in my Nido King. I am not going to go for Earth Power here. I'm going to be a man and I'm going to Fire Blast just on the off chance that he wanted to bring in the Bronzong. And now the Toxapex is gone. The Go Goat is gone. Ladies and gentlemen, Scarf Blastoise is about to put in some work, hopefully. So, in comes the Weavile. We already know that he's going to be Sword Dance. And if he Sword Dances, I really don't care. I have answers for it regardless. So, I'm just going to go ahead and sack off my Deontay. Unfortunately, Deontay didn't get to do anything because he played his Bronzong very well. But now, I get to just bring in Blastoise and click Water Spout here, which is no drawback whatsoever. Although, I'm not going to lie, I was really disappointed that my Water Spout only did 31%. And for those of you who are wondering why I didn't go for Surf, and I actually did go for Water Spout, even though I took chip damage at 76%, Water Spout is still stronger than Surf. So I just went with my hardest hitting move, which was Water Spout. And 
In hindsight, I probably should have just gone for it again because I'm actually gonna switch out here when in all honesty, I didn't really need to. Like I could have just stayed in and still clicked the water spot for free and got a KO. So this was the one play I really regret doing was not just uh, being aggressive with Blastoise. As in comes the Blaziken, if this is Scarfed, he does outspeed me, but luckily it turns out that he is not, as I'm able to knock him out with the Earth Power. In comes the Tapu Koko. I don't really have much use for my Hydreigon at this point in the game, so I'm just gonna leave it in here for Death Fodder and go for the Dark Pulse. Obviously, clearly I should have gone for the Earth Power, but I thought that he would be cheeky for some reason and try to bring in Bronzong. So yeah, again, another misplay on my part, but I don't think this misplay was as big as me not just being aggressive with my Blastoise. So I will be able to get off decent damage on him as he knocks me out and I can go ahead, bring in my King, and I am just going to go straight for the Fire Blast thinking he would try to bring in the Bronzong as he goes for the Roost. I am still just gonna Fire Blast. I figured that this is the best play I can do regardless because I hit everything and eventually I will knock something out. As down goes the Bronzong, he is gonna decide to bring in his Weavile, which is perfectly fine by me because at this point, I basically win with the combination of Blastoise and my Mega Manetric. So I bring in my Mega Main here so I can just safely go for the Bolt Switch as he decides to bring in his Tapu Koko. We know this Tapu Koko is not Scarfed, which means my Blastoise will 100% be able to outspeed him and I'm going to destroy him with the Water Spout. So very good game to free Colin there. We were able to win our second match here. Let's go ahead and get into battle number three. So this is going to be the quick little builder for game number two. A little timestamp should be on your screen. So you guys can go ahead into the actual game for number two. Now I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. I have no confidence that I'm going to win this game whatsoever. Like this matchup is, is basically horrendous for me. Uh, Crocodile destroys me. Kieran Black just gets a kill for free. And then Venusaur plus Tapu Fini plus Licky Licky is just absurdly difficult to break through. And then of course he has Bronzong so that means that my Deontay is utterly useless to me. And then Aerodactyl is like really the only manageable thing on his squad. And I guess if he brings Stumpfisk, I don't expect the Aerodactyl or Stumpfisk to come to this game just because everything else already has such an amazing matchup against me. So I need to pull something out of my ass here and hopefully bring some prep that will catch uh, iPro off guard. I've known iPro for a bit now. He used to be in my front office and everybody says he's a very solid player. So not only is he a good player, but he also has easily a uh, team matchup against me. So yeah, this is not really looking that good, but hey, we're gonna try and do something. So hopefully we can win here. So first set, as you can see, we have Swords Dance Decidueye. Uh, this at plus two basically obliterates all of his defense. I destroy Tapu Fini, Licky Licky with Leaf Blade. I absolutely annihilate Venusaur with Brave Bird and then Shadow Sneak is just kind of there for priority if I can maybe sweep with this. But if I am allowed to Swords Dance, then something is going to get absolutely destroyed, which is why I really wanted to bring the set this game. Uh, I'm just hoping that I can get one kill. If I can get one kill on one of his fat mons, then hey, that is more than I expected of myself initially going into this game. Next off, we have a very cool Reunicla set here, which is modest max HP, but it's calm mind. And I know this seems a little bit odd. The main reason I ran something this offensive is because I still live any hit from the Crocodile with my Culber Berry, and then I can still also tank hits from the Kieran Black. Obviously not as good as I would be able to if I was physically defensive, but if I can somehow manage to deal with both of those Mons, then this Reuniclus set can actually uh, help us break through his absurdly fat core of Finny, Licky, and Mega Venusaur. So that was the general idea behind this set if we get the plus one this thing is going to be absolutely wrecking his uh fat defensive mons so yeah i can also use this to lure in crocodile and get rid of that because crocodile is easily along with karen black the biggest threat that he has against me next off we have sash lead Nido king i literally don't need much speed on this Nido king because i don't expect him to run a very speedy tapu fini in the first place so i can put a bunch of my evs into my special attack and into my physical attack here 
because this way I am able to smack his fat as well. Or if he does lead off maybe with his Krugadal or his Kieran Black, I am going to be aggressive and I'm going to go for an offensive move immediately against one of those two leads because once I'm able to get rid of his offensive threats, this matchup becomes a whole lot easier for us in the long run. So yeah, Superpower, Sludge Wave, and Fire Blast should be hitting just about everything. Again, I don't expect Stumpfisk, so I didn't really think I needed to have uh, Earth Power on the set. And then again, I did not forget Stealth Rocks. I did not forget Stealth Rocks. <laughs> Next off, we have Mega Manetric here, running just about the same standard set, but we now have Signal Beam as opposed to Hidden Power Ice, just because I think Signal Beam does do more damage to the Crocodile while also being able to uh, hit the Bronzong if it really comes down to it. And I guess I could also fish for some Confusions if it really, really mattered that much. Next off, we have very fat defensive Celesteela here, being able to just be a giant nuisance to his team. It's the same thing as game number two, where even if he does bring his grass type, we have Air Slash, so we're still going to be pressuring Venusaur. And then if we get rid of Venusaur, then we just spam Leech Seed for free. And then Heavy Slam and Air Slash basically hit everything else. And I don't care about Bronzong whatsoever. And then finally off, we have Roost Charge Beam Hydreigon, which is very interesting because first off, I'm running the exact same spread from game number two, which again, I still have no idea what this EV spread is for. I just, I wanted bulk. I wanted some power and I have enough speed to outspeed Krugadal because there's no real reason he should run uh, plus speed natured Karen Black in this game. So the cool thing about Charge Beam is that it allows me not to just hit Finny, but also boost up my special attack to be able to break through his fat cores along with, uh, actually no, this should be Dragon Pulse, I think. Actually no, is it Earth Power Dark Pulse? Yeah, it might actually be Earth Power and Dark Pulse. I think I considered putting Dragon Pulse, but if he brought Bronzong, then that would be a little bit annoying. So yeah, I don't necessarily need Dragon Stab, because if I have Rocks up and I can pressure Karen Black, or if it's Life Orb and I have Rocks up, then uh, Dark Pulse should still be doing enough damage to it. But yeah, guys, that is our third and final squad. So if we win this match, I think we make it out of pools, but if we lose, then we don't make it out of pools. So yeah, hopefully we can win in this very, very terrible, terrible matchup. I'm starting to get upset that my opponents keep bringing Mons I'm not expecting <laughs> because my opponent brought the Stumpfisk. I really did not expect Stumpfisk at all to come to this game and that's because I thought Bronzong would come mainly just for my Deontay but I guess he knew that with him having Bronzong I wouldn't be uh, wanting to bring Deontay which does make sense so this Stumpfisk could actually be a bit of an issue because I don't necessarily have too much ground coverage on my team. So looking at the matchup, obviously Venusaur plus Licky Licky plus Tapu Funi is disgusting, dude. This fat is just, oh, I already know this is gonna be a pain in the ass to break through because then you also factor in Stumpfisk, which is definitely gonna be defensive. And then offensively, Kieran Black and Crocodile absolutely obliterate me. So again, I had no confidence at all going into the game. I was like, if I can kill something, I'm gonna kill it. So I'm gonna be leading off with my Sash Nido King as he decides to lead off with his Licka Licky. Turn one, I considered going straight for the superpower, but if I could keep it hidden for later in the match, I thought that that might be a little bit better for me. So I figured just getting up my rocks turn one was still gonna gain me something regardless of what he wanted to do. As he dragon tells me into Celesteela, I'm gonna lead seed, not expecting him to bring in the Venusaur as he dragon tells me into my Decidueye. This was probably the best thing, honestly, that he could have dragon tailed me into because now I know that this Licka Licky will not be able to do any type of damage to me. And if he doesn't go for dragon tail, this is my best chance to just be aggressive and go for the Swords Dance. If you look at his team, even though yes, he does have Crocodile and he does have the Kieran Black, there is a chance that he may expect me to go for the U-turn, thinking that I can't do anything to him or just expecting him to go for the Dragon Tail once again. So what I'm gonna decide to do is actually just go ahead and go for the Swords Dance as he does luckily switch out into the Venusaur. I checked the calcs, unless this is max defense, max HP, even after rocks, it's a roll, but it's a roll nonetheless. There is no shot that this Venusaur will live. Like, he has to be max defense, max HP, and get the roll in his favor to live. Because I am plus two adamant. I have the Brave Bird. I am going to go straight for it, and this 
Venusaur just gets murdered. Oh my lord, when I saw Venusaur drop, I got so happy. I got so, so happy because, first off, I wanted this Decidueye set to at least get one kill. But now, with Mega Venusaur gone, that is one super fat Pokemon I no longer have to deal with. Now, I only have to deal with Finny, uh, Stumpfisk, and Lickalicky. The only issue now is that he does get a free switch potentially into his Kyurem or his Krugadal, which I most likely am going to have to sack off my Decidueye to anyways. But he actually ends up bringing in the Kieran Black here as I'm able to do a solid chunk of damage with two Shadow Seeks because I was able to live the Dragon Claw. I put this in range of Stealth Rocks now which is absolutely amazing because if I don't allow him to go for the Defog with Tapu Fini then this is going to put me in a really good spot throughout this battle. So I bring him on my Netric here. I lose nothing in just going straight for the Signal Beam. I get my kill and I'll be in a pretty decent position here as in comes the, Thum the Stumpfisk he does obviously eat the hit as I unfortunately miss overheat. Now, in the long run, I guess that miss didn't really matter. But getting off any type of extra damage on Stumpfisk would have been really good for me. Especially for my offensive mons in the back. Because again, I don't have a lot of ground coverage because I didn't expect Stumpfisk to come at all to this match. So that overheat really sucks as he's able to toxic me basically for free and I don't want to stay in and take an earth power as he does go for it on my Hydreigon switch in here. I am going to go for the earth power of my own because even though yes Finny is his best switch in, because Finny does not have any form of reliable recovery outside of passive recovery with leftovers, any type of damage I get off on Finny ultimately will help me in the long run of the battle here. So I don't want to take a Moonblast as I switch into my Celesteela. He does unfortunately get the Defog off, but this will allow me to now go for the Heavy Slam, expecting him to either stay in and go for the Taunt or try to bring in the Kieran Black. But because he brought in Stumpfisk, I'm going to go for the Lead Seed, catching the Kieran Black, and down it goes. So Kieran Black is gone. That is really great. He's lost one super fat Mon in Mega Venusaur, and he's lost easily his scariest offensive threat in Karen Black. The only issue now is breaking through his other three bulky Mons and hoping that this Crooked Out does not violate me. So in comes the Stumpfisk. I am going to go straight for the lead seed. I am going to get off any type of damage I can on this Stumpfisk. And I have Heavy Slam and Air Slash as my only two offensive moves. So clearly, those will be doing nothing to him as he makes a really nice double switch here into the Tapu Fini. In hindsight, I probably should have left in my Celesteela. Like, even if he had tried to continue attacking my Stumpfisk, I could have then just gone for the Air Slash and consistently kept weakening his Stumpfisk. So him bringing in Finny here has me a little bit scared because, first off, I'm not running a lot of speed on my Needle King. And unless he is running a lot of speed, he can outspeed me and potentially knock me out. But that's a risk I'm willing to take. So I'm going to go for the Sludge Wave here. As I crit the incoming Lickalicky, I didn't check the calc, so I'm not sure if that crit really ended up mattering too much in the long run because I do have superpower and if he was Spadef bulky then superpower I think still would have been able to knock him out since I'm running uh, max attack EVs on my Nido King. So yeah again I don't really think that that crit mattered but if it did I pro and you're watching this then uh, let me know. So in comes the Krugadal and now I have to choose something on my team to potentially just sack off to this thing because nothing I have necessarily wants to take a hit from it so I'm gonna switch into my Celesteela but it turns out that he's actually a substitute Krugadal and not foddering I thought Celesteela was a lot lower but yeah anyways as long as I have Celesteela I guess I can still deal with this Krugadal unless you know he turns out to be sub bulk up which I was not anticipating whatsoever thankfully though one Heavy Slam is able to break his sub at plus one only. But at plus two, as you can see, I'm only doing about 22%, which means I now need to rely on Air Slash being able to break his substitute, as luckily it does do so. And it turns out that he is actually Power Trip Krugadal as I'm able to Leech Seed him here. I guess in hindsight, what I should have done was gone for the Air Slash because I would have ultimately got off more damage on him. But by going for the Leech Seed, I basically prevent him from wanting to go for the substitute so I'm perfectly fine in staying in here and just protecting to gain back a little bit of recovery as I'm guaranteed out of range of his power trip so I'm gonna go for the air slash hoping that it would be enough with the lead seed to knock him out but he barely lives 
on 5%, and then he makes a really nice switch here into Stumpfisk. I thought about going for the Leech Seed there again, but I figured he would just knock me out regardless as I Leech Seed Stumpfisk, he does finish me off here, allowing me to now get a free switch into something else on my team. Uh, in hindsight, me bringing in Nidoking was probably my better play just because I forced out his Stumpfisk regardless. Because as you guys are going to see now, even though yes, I do have the Culber Berry, it turns out that I forgot to double check my Reuniclus and I have the Focus Blast. Yeah, that is really not good at all. Honestly, like I don't, I really don't want to leave in my Reuniclus and risk missing Focus Blast. If I had Signal Beam, I gladly, gladly would have stayed in here and gone for the signal beam to take the knockoff because then at that point I basically just win with my Reuniclus but because I have focus blast I figured that well I can still deal with this crocodile later in the match right I don't need to stay in here and uh, risk the focus blast so I'm going to switch it to my Hydreigon thinking that he would just want to go ahead and sack off this crocodile as I go for the superpower not superpower sorry the earth power as in comes the Tapu Fini he does not know I have the charge beam but I don't want to stay in and take a moon blast as he makes a really nice double switch into the crocodile and you're gonna see that i pro plays these next couple of turns so immaculately i'm not gonna lie to you guys i got absolutely outplayed these next couple of turns as you guys are about to find out and all because i didn't double check my reuniclus to see if I had the Signal Beam instead of the Focus Blast. Because originally I had a Focus Blast, then I put the Signal Beam, and I'm guessing I forgot just to double check it, and it was still Focus Blast on Draft Premiere. And yeah, that really, really sucks. As you can see, this Crocodile is just consistently getting more and more health every single time as he is making really good plays, expecting me to charge beam. And I need to start being aggressive myself because I cannot allow this to continue to happen because I don't want to put myself in a position of where it's going to come down to a focus blast from my Reuniclus hitting this Krugadal, which honestly, that may be what it comes down to. And in which case, that's really bad because obviously I know I'm going to miss. So I'm able to finally get rid of the Stumpfisk as he's basically forced to bring in Tapu Fini because... It can not only live a hit, but it can also live a hit and knock me out. But he over predicts, goes for the Scald, as now I get to claim the Tapu Fini here. There's really no reason for him to save it, as down it goes, and in comes the Crocodile. Now, this is really, 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 really bad, because with my Hydreigon being toxic, and looking at the rest of my team, I can actually not afford to switch out here. But because I can't afford to switch out here, and the fact that this Crocodile is slower than me, that means even though, yes, I get off a hit on this Krugadao, he is still going to be able to end up behind a substitute. Now, what I should have done instead of going for the Earth Power was actually gone for the Dark Pulse just because that would have given me a chance to go for the flinch. And in which case, I flinch him and I knock myself out to the Toxic, allowing Manetri to come in and then finish off Krugadao. But as you saw there, Earth Power just barely misses out on allowing this Krugadao to make a sub and now it is behind a sub so I'm forced to bring in Manetric as I am going to be able to break the sub with the signal beam he will knock me out with the earthquake and now the game comes down to again whether or not I hit this focus blast it all comes down to whether or not I hit this focus blast but luckily he actually decided to go for the bulk up which means even if I miss focus blast here I have another chance to go for focus blast so now i have two chances to hit one focus blast which will hopefully still be good odds in my favor so i go for the first one and i am able to hit it down goes the krugadao and we're able to make it out of pools three and one technically because we all got a forfeit win so yeah very good game to ipro there man because i did not check reuniclus this match got dragged out like 15 20 extra turns so yeah, always double check your mons, guys. Always double check your mons. But that is going to be the end of this series for today, guys. I apologize that this part alone was like 40 minutes. Yeah, this is what I was talking about in part one. Like, I didn't want to upload something that would be like an hour long. At least 40 minutes is kind of manageable, I guess. But regardless, hopefully y'all did enjoy. Hit that thumbs up button down below. And with that being said, I will see you all tomorrow on Sunday with my week... No, not my week. My round four PU Smogon tournament thing round yeah i'll see y'all tomorrow basically so later everybody thank you all for watching